Cade Cunningham named a top 50 player, according to CBS. Shout out to Cade, first of all, for cracking the top 50, which he should have did a long time ago, in my opinion. But shout out to him. Congratulations to him. So with that said, I want to give a little bit of context with some of the players from his draft class and what their rankings were. We've got Franz Wagner, 51. We've got Evan Mobley, 48. Case 49, by the way. Scotty Barnes is at 42. That was surprising to me. Jalen Green, 92. So, uh, the king over the cracking. <laughs> Any instant reactions to the player rankings of the other players from K's draft class? When it comes to our team, man, it's always we're going to give you something, but say Ty is still going to be kind of disrespectful, bro. <laughs> Like, what are we talking about with Barnes and Evan Mobley? You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, Jalen Green, hey, fine. You know, in the 90s, whatever. We all, you know, when he came here, we tried to warn people how streaky this man was. It is what it is. Yeah. Bro, them other cats, bro. You know what I'm saying? I can even let Franz Wagner go because of the success over there. You know what I'm saying? I, I will have him higher, man. Barnes and Mobley yeah. ahead of K. Come on, bro. What are we doing? Come on, man. To me... Personally, I'd rather have Wagner instead of both of those guys. Yeah. Me too. Personally. And they got Wagner at 51 and Barnes at 40. Like, what? I don't, and I don't, I still don't understand this Mobley love, man. I feel like he just gets so much love for being a good NBA player. Right? I'm not even trying to throw shade. I just think he's a good NBA player. He's still young, yeah. right? But yeah. come on, bro. What are we doing? But what I think, once again, it goes to the team success, too, which is why I'm glad we got JB on our side now. Some of these were just crazy to me, man. Like, Scotty Barnes at 42 was wild to me. Jalen Green at 92, is that too low for him? Or what do you think about him? I would kind of have, have to him. I would have to see the list and see who's ahead of him. I mean, like, that, that is kind of low for him. I think that's I low mean, for him, bro. He did he did some improvement over there. That's a little bit too low. Yeah, they got guys like Derek Lively. They got uh, Tyler Hero ahead of him. Like, yeah, I, I can't agree with that. Mike sure, Conley. Bro. I don't think Mike Conley's mm -mm -mm. a better player than Jalen Green. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, Not Mike Nye. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I would move him up. I would move Franz up a lot more. Um, and a lot of these other guys I'll move up. I got some controversial names I'll kind of get out the way. We talked about okay. Mobley and Barnes. We beat that horse enough already. People want to stand on this hill of those guys being better than Cade. And I think yeah. they need to be tested because that's just insane. Yeah. They're, they're not. Um, yep. I don't think Jalen Williams should be higher than Cade. I, don't, I, I like him as a player, but I also think a lot of the winning – kind of feeds a bit more of his hype than he gets he's a fantastic yep. player i would love absolutely him to pistons as a wing absolutely i don't think he's that much better than Cade. uh i don't think i don't know who what does Derek white have on the league he's not the 36th best player in the nba he's just not i i think that's insane i don't think drew holiday got him at 36 they, bro, they referring they that. referring to that oh my. playoff series that's that's from the playoffs bro wow 36 for Derek is. white bro yeah what? that's why he that high it's, it's, it's that a success all. yeah it's no. terrible it is terrible but it's from the success that's all man I'm for. even even and i like some of these guys like chet's a dog paulo i love Wimby. i don't have a problem with him at 12. Wimby is he deserves to be i don't either here. I don't they either. Don't, notice they don't argue about his record. Nobody we says nothing. His, we, we look at his write up, <laughs> they say nothing about team record. They just say he a dog. He's going to be great forever. We love him. But Bro, Cade is yeah. all about team this, team that, team this, team that. I don't think Cade is 20 spots away from Paulo. And I don't think Chet should be that much higher than him either. Like, I feel like Chet is 30. That's way what? too high for me. And they're good. I like those guys. You telling me Cade is 49 behind those dudes? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. No way. No that's crazy. Way. I don't like that at all. And those you can't even really blame it on them. injuries either. No. And missed time either. That's just nah. straight up player for player in their mind. Nah. nah I'm wow. Not that. Yeah, Derek White, Drew Holiday, like a lot of these names are just kind of... Just even Drew, kind of like... Nasty. Yeah. Drew now. I'm thinking Drew now. I don't know, Drew, if Drew now is better than Cade Cunning. If, if you put Cade on that team... If I had the power to, I would put this list up in Cade's locker, bro. Right. I need you to look at this every day. Like man, this Cade, is, Ken, AB, if y'all watching, man, that's insane, bro. Paulo, I think, is a dog, but like you can't tell me that he's twenty spots ahead of Cade. They had the same numbers. No, nah, man. No, nah, exactly. Same exactly. Cade was more efficient. You can't convince me that he's that much higher than where Cade is listed. It just no. doesn't make no kind of sense. Do you think 
there will be any other Pistons by the end of this season that will be in the top 100. Yeah. Who do you think has the high, the best chance or guys you think have the best chance of cracking that top 100 by season's end? Uh, we going with the entire, entire team in general? Or yeah. are we going with our, just our young core? Yeah, entire team. I still, like I said, I, I got a lot of high hopes in, in Ivy. I really do. Yeah. I, I think he's going to explode, man. Like I said, with him getting the freedom that he deserves, with them having proper space in, out there, I think he's going to be able to attack the basket uh, and create a lot of problems for teams. So I'll say Ivy. What do you think, Eric? I'm going to go both of them. I think Duran and Ivy should crack this top 100. Yeah. I'm just looking yeah. at the yeah. list yeah. itself. I got it right here. <laughs> Jabari is 100. Clay Thompson, 99. Kyle Kuzma, 98. He may even should probably be higher than that. Um, Bold down by Donovich from the Hawks. Lou Dort, okay. 96. Um, KCP, 95. I absolutely can see a world yeah. where Duran and Jay Nivey are better than all five of those guys. Yes. I feel like if they're not, you know, they don't have to be top 50, top 75, nothing crazy like that. But mm -hmm. top 100, based on the skill set that we've seen from these guys, knowing how well Cade and Duran play together, he's still going to get yep. a lot of those looks at the rim. I think if he's healthy, he don't have the ankle problems. If he's able to get his fouls under control a little bit and, you know, learn to block his shots and keep rebounding with the veracity that he's been doing, he should easily be top 75. And with yep. Ivy trending upwards and his scoring, if his jumper is getting more consistent, he's finding passing lanes defensively, I think he can find himself in, you know, the 80 range as well. Like, I, I think yeah. they, they should be aiming for that to be their thing. Obviously, you want a bigger hopes to be on the top 100 list. Yeah, but for sure. Yeah. For those little yeah. personal goals, that locker room bulletin board material, these are the kind of things that they should be hanging up. They absolutely should be shooting for that top 100. Right, because what does that mean if they are in the top 100? What does that mean for the team? Right. So it's kind of like a domino right. effect. It's a good thing if they are, because that means that the team has some success. Right. Um, right. I'm with you, man. I, th I think both of those guys have a legit shot. We always talk about how Cade is going to be uh, one of the biggest beneficiaries of spacing. Right. JD is, too, mm -hmm. because the ball is going to be moving. These defenses got to make a decision now. Swing, swing. You got a scrambling defense and you got a JD now under the basket, wide open. You know what I mean? So like. He's going to be, like you mentioned it earlier, I think he's going to be a double-double machine without having one play drawn up for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to eat this season. I think that pick and roll is going to be looking very, very much like a well-oiled machine this season between the two of them. And as far as J.I., I just think just having the right structure, having a coach who, who I am hopeful for has the ability to put him in the best positions to be successful. Mm -hmm. Right? It seemed like in J.I.'s first season, he was just playing three basketball. That's when he plays at his best. In last season, he looked like he was just trying to play very careful. Mm -hmm. Very careful, like not trying to make any mistakes right. as opposed to just playing his game. He looked very, his game looked very subdued, right? And so it was just like he was thinking, he was trying to do the right thing as opposed to just playing your game. And y'all know, y'all hoop, when you're thinking on the court, you're not gonna play well. It's just not right. gonna happen. So I think that's what, just that alone is gonna help him go a long way to just getting back to who he is and then being put in the right position to, be his best. See, I'm with you, bro. I think all three of those guys have a good shot of being in the top 100 by the end of next season, for sure. Definitely uh, interested to see what this offense is going to actually look like and what they're allowed to do, especially from a big man standpoint. Yeah. In the dream world, I would love for JD uh, to bring out a 15, 18 foot shot. And I know he's capable of knocking that down. Mm -hmm. I wish that was, you know, reality. We're talking about bigger staff coming from Cleveland, where bigs were allowed to do that. I would love to see that from a guy and Jalen Duran, man, it all depends on on how the offense is drawn up. I got a lot of success coming from that big man room. I don't know if it's going to be Tobias Harris or mm -hmm. it's going to be Isaiah Stewart. I don't know who's going to be the running mate, but whoever yeah. it is, they're going to have a lot of opportunity. And I think Isaiah Stewart is also another little dark horse name that we need to uh, really pay attention to, man, because he's going to be allowed to stretch the floor and he's been improving every single year. I expect him to be uh, a pretty big factor for this team, too, uh, based off of what he does. But the lineups are always the question mark for me. Until we see the lineups, until we see who's going to play together, who's going to get minutes, it's kind of hard to put your finger on who's going to be the most successful out there. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Harder than in TV in Y2K. You don't want to see, but that Y2K.
breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time, he's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they see we working? Close up my action. Yeah, even I'll be on the way and get that put around. Electrifying through the air, a Detroit shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is poison. It's in the sea.